the run-up to the 2023 presidential election, the support for the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, has grown tremendously. The recent private visits between former President Olusegun Obasanjo to the convener of the Northern Elders Forum, Angu Abdullahi, and vice versa to allegedly galvanize support for Obi is generating reactions, especially in the North. Businessman and self-acclaimed anti-corruption crusader Madi Shehu believes that Peter Obi has not done enough to earn the support of Northerners. Aside this, Shehu says the chances of Northerners voting for Obi rather than Atiku Abubakar, who is from the same region and religion, is very slim. In an audio message, Shehu accused the leading supporters of the Labour Party candidates, such as Olusegun Obasanjo and Angu Abdullahi, of pursuing the Obi project for their selfish interests. Is Nigeria now tilting towards regional politics? What is the prospect of the Labour Party in Northern Nigeria, especially in the light of what seems like a failing alliance bid with the Rabiu Konkonsu led New Nigerian People's Party, NMPP? We'll be having a conversation with Madi Shehu on this and many more. I'm Somna Sambu, and this is the Arise interview. Welcome to the show. Now, activist, self-acclaimed anti-corruption crusader, businessman, medical practitioner, and chairman of Dialogue Group, Mahdi Shehu, has described as selfish the support by former President Olusegun Obasanjo for Peter Obi, the Labour Party candidate, saying his efforts to woo some northern leaders into the project should be rejected by northerners. Now, Shehu is appealing to the northern elders and stakeholders not to buy into Obasanjo's message, saying his antecedents do not reflect him as being sincere. Now, the activist was reacting to a recent visit by former President Olusegun Obasanjo to the convener of the Northern Elders Forum, Professor Angu Abdullahi in Zaria Kaduna State, after a similar visit by Angu Abdullahi to the former president in Ota. Now, uh, he's saying that uh, the professor's support in uh, mobilizing the forum and the not to vote for Peter Obi uh, should not be accepted by other Northerners. Uh, he revealed uh, further details of the discussion, which includes the formation of a new group called the Nigerian Project, uh, which is supposed to be the third force to be backed by prominent leaders, including the uh, former uh, military head of state, uh, Ibrahim Babengida. Uh, and all of this is being put together to be known as the uh, third force. Well, for more on this, I'm glad to be joined by uh, Mahdi Shehu himself, who is the chairman of Dialogue Group, uh, to help us look at these issues. And he's join, joining me from the capital of uh, former northern Nigeria, Kaduna, where we'll take a look at all of these issues uh, for the next 60 minutes. Stay with us. That, uh, he is at Zaria to confer with him, solicit for his support, ensure that he mobilize Northern Elders Forum and the entire North for an Obi project. And he promised Angu Abdullahi that I promise you if Obi forms government, you are going to be a formidable person in that government. You are going to play an important role. We are going to carry you along. This was what Obasanjo told his own group. The same day that they met with Angu Abdullahi, also Obasanjo told the group that uh, he has also consulted with Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed. And he told Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed his own mission that they want to form what is called Nigerian Project, which is going to be commissioned and brought to the public in the next seven days. They are going to bring out and uh, establish and uh, commission what is called the Nigerian project, the third force. That he told Dr. Hakim that uh, he's asking for that special favor for him, for Dr. Hakim to be part and parcel of this third force project, Nigerian project, OB project. All right, uh, Madi Shehu there, and uh, I would like to welcome you to the show. Uh, you must have listened to yourself there, being optimistic <laughs> about the issues you raised. Uh, 
Let's start with this, uh, the Nigerian project. Why do you think that former President Olusegun Obasanjo is keen on uh, supporting Peter Obi and uh, is wooing top northerners like uh, the convener of the Northern Elders Forum, Angu Abdullahi, and uh, Dr. Akim Baba Ahmed to join that uh, project? Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, Nigeria. Good evening, Africa. Good evening, the whole world. I think that question should have been passed to Olusegun Obasanjo. Ask him why has he suddenly woken up from a sleep or a slumber <clears throat> and aspiring to promote an OB? I'm saying that so that you can hear from the horse's mouth, but I'm sure he's going to be economical in telling you the truth. But my intervention is going to be rooted into ancient antiquity, history, philosophy, and logic of Obasanjo. In 1979, precisely look at Punch, 19th of September 1979. The headline was front cover story, 2.8 billion naira oil money missing. Obasanjo left office in 1980, precisely on 26 June 1980. A crude oil tribunal of inquiry was put in place to investigate that alleged 2.8 billion naira NNPC money missing. And to chair that tribunal was uh, Justice Ayo Irekefe, Langiwa, Sula Kurfi, Arthur Mbanifo, and Mr. Varg as a secretary to go and establish the truth or otherwise of that 2.8 billion naira missing money. The tribunal started sitting in Lagos. Part of the people invited to testify before the tribunal on account of the document they had before them was the former president then, Olisigo Obasanjo. He completely ignored all the seven invitations by the tribunal to appear before it. When he was pressed further, he detailed Chief Rotemi Williams, of blessed memory, to go and represent him with just one simple submission. The submission was that the evidence being sought from Obasanjo by the tribunal being a public knowledge and a public document could as well be given by any civil civil servant. But the reason why they were asking for Obasanjo physically is that uh, documents available to the tribunal have clearly established that when General Muhammad Buhari, then the oil minister, minister for petroleum resources, went for course, Obasanjo took over the portfolio of the president Commander-in-Chief and Petroleum Resources Minister. And in the span of six months, he gave heavy discounts that cannot be explained by the act established in NPC. Beyond his power as a minister, even beyond his power as the president, he kept on giving out discounts and premiums at will. And it led to a heavy loss on the part of an NPC, they wanted him to sh shed light on that. He vehemently refused. That is to tell you the disdain he has for constitutionality, constitutionality and accountability. So he has this I'm, old history. If I may come of, in here. He has this history. If, Excuse if I, me. Sorry, let me, let, if let I me may come somewhere. in here, this same Obasanjo you're me, talking yeah, about yeah, appeared yeah. before the Oputa panel, yes. which was set up uh to that, look at issues that happened in the country so if he didn't appear before that panel at least no, that record the, the, that he appeared before another the, panel. the circumstances the circumstances the circumstances are different in that particular issue of a crude oil sale tribunal he was an accused also to speak by the documents in oputa panel he was an injured lion he was there to continue licking his wound and make the wound look fresh on account of Abacha's stewardship and his relationship. So treat it very differently. Now I'm going straight to the question. Why do I think an Obasanjo is uh, 
selling a Peter Obi, quote and unquote, uh, using as follows. I'm even surprised that Obasanjo is doing this. I think he is trying to pull a wool on the face of all Ibos. Because just read his book, My Command. He read it cover to cover. Inside the book, he was so proud to own up to the entire role he played in decimating the military of Biapara, in carrying them into submission, in annihilating them, in defeating them. He took over the entire credit of the fail of Biapara agitation that led to the civil war. Not only that, after the war, it was unilaterally agreed, internationally and locally, that there should be reconstruction, reconciliation, rehabilitation. Nobody was reconciled. It was were not reconciled. They are still agitating. Nobody, nothing was reconstructed. They are still facing dirge of infrastructure. Nobody was reconciled. And Obasanjo was there. He had an opportunity to reconstruct, rehabilitate, to reconcile. Rather, that, rather than doing that, he left them in full of their blood. I'm therefore shocked that Ibos are now swallowing Obasanjo's trade hook, line, and sinker. When documented history is there, gazetted, the role he played in leading Ibos to what they were then, 20, 30, 40 years back. Okay. Luckily for them, they are beginning to recover. Ah. Therefore, it's surprising that he's selling Obi, and Obi is believing him in spite of documented history of the crime he committed against the entire Igbo nation. Maybe he has meditated, maybe he has prayed over, maybe he is lamenting, and he wants to correct the wrongs. The answer is better left to Obasanjo. Uh, okay, a <laughs> very interesting perspective you've got there. And there's always room for repentance, I must say. And uh, who wouldn't even uh, want the former president's support? Because we've seen that almost every person who wants to be president since uh, uh, 2007 has always sought for the support of former president Olusegun Obasanjo. But I want to ask you now. Not what, anymore. What exactly yeah. is wrong with Obasanjo seeking the support of the North for Peter Obi? Isn't Peter Obi Nigerian enough to deserve such a support? Let me say for the obtuse time that under the Nigerian constitution and all operational laws, there is nothing wrong when an Obasanjo conversing support for any candidate of his choice. There is nothing wrong with an OV aspiring to become the president of Nigeria. But then there should be a, a, a parameter, a yardstick, and a measurement of assessing whether these people are what they said they are, and they are competent enough, and they have the good conscience to sell and to promote. Let us go to Obasanjo. If Obasanjo is coming to the north to seek for a partnership, to sell a candidate, to aspire to promote, protect, and project an OB, there are relevant questions that we need to ask him. Under an Obasanjo, he destroyed the entire economy of the north. To today, nobody can convince any northerner the consolidation of the banks which saw the total extinction of all commercial banks of northern origin because we could not raise the money, because we don't have th those type of money to sustain a bank of 25 billion era then, was done deliberately by Obasanjo to bring the North to its own knees. Is, is it the Innocent same North? military officers. Uh, is it the who, same North? Uh, uh, sorry to intervene there. Is it the you same know, North that Atik Abubakar was vice president in that government and had a lot of uh, senators, a lot of uh, federal under, ministers, and all under, of that? Under, uh, under, under the Nigerian constitution, a vice president is just an appendix. He lives and survives at the mercy of the president. Till today, until that section of the constitution is reviewed, is amended, is varied, 
I don't envy anybody becoming a vice president. So stop talking about an article. At that material time, there was nothing he could do. In any event, let me continue. Documented history has shown that after destroying the life wire of the bank of the North, he went ahead to retire promising young officers of Northern origin, Muslims and Christians, simply because we were paying for Abacha's crime against an Obasanjo. Not only that, even in the civil service, people of Northern origin were being exited, again sharing Abacha's, Abacha's crime. The only crime of the North is that an Abacha has given a devastating blow to an opposition Jew over a true or a phantom or alleged coup. Obasanjo is fully aware that uh, under the military dispensation, under the military uh, uh, rules, if you are suspected to partake or participate or finance or support or even become aware of an existing coup, you remain guilty. That is the rule of the military. It's not the northerners rule. It is the military rule. And therefore, he should go and settle his case with Abacha on Judgment Day. But visiting the scene of the father over the child and that of the child over the son, it is not biblical, it is not statemanly, it is, it, 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 it is a crime against common sense, it is a crime against, human, against humanity. The father shall not bear the iniquity of the son, neither shall the son bear the iniquity of the father. The wickedness of the wicked shall be upon it, and the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon it. And this same Obasanjo that you are accusing is not uh, on record publicly to have actually asked Nigerians to vote for Peter Obi and all of that. Uh, how, how would you um, convince Nigerians that what you are saying is actually what happened uh, in, during the private visit of uh, Angu Abdullahi to Obasanjo and then Obasanjo to Angu Abdullahi? Well, in, in the first place, the day after this, uh, the, the meeting, which took place last week, Ango called the correspondent of Delhi Trust, and you can check Delhi Trust. He reported that Obasanjo was in Ango Abdullah's residence in Azaria, and that part of what they discussed were as follows, that they have agreed that Atiku and Bola Tinibu are no options. This was made public. It's in public domain. Yes, that's on Not record. Only but, that. but he didn't Angu say Abdullah, that they should vote for yeah, it's, it's uh, 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 Peter Obi. Hold, 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 hold on, please. It is on record. Nobody can disclaim that. Number two, Obasanjo has a disdain for Bola Tinubu, for Bola Tinubu's extra courage, extra guts, extra audacity to take Obasanjo to court on account of the creation of additional local government development areas in Lagos. Up to the Supreme Court and Bola Tinibu won. It was only on the coming on board of uh, the next president after Obasanjo that Lagos money was released. He has that disdain for Bola Tinibu. And he told the government that uh, Bola Tinibu is not an option because he has so many issues surrounding himself his personality, his genealogy, and his academic qualification, such that he have the fear that maybe, probably, perhaps, Bola Tinubu may not make it to the presidential polls. And of course, Uncle Abdullah, he told him that uh, my grudge with Atiku is that uh, in 1999, I am supposed to have been nominated as the vice president of Atiku, but somewhere, somehow, I was blocked. Even a mysterious slot was not given to me for that reason, I will never promote an atiku. Where did I get this story? The moment Obasanjo left uh, Zaria, the following day he went to Abuja and reported back to his group what transpired. And I have said that in my clip, I have said enough. He reported to them that, that he has reached out to Angu Abdullahi and he promised Angu Abdullahi that if he supports his own project, the third, no, the, the third, the third force, he and she will ensure that Angu Abdullah plays a prominent role, an epicentral role, an important role in the OB project. Similarly, he gave the same offer, the same assurances to, to Hakim Baba Ahmed. What I don't know is whether Angu Abdullah and Hakim Baba Ahmed have given him in wholesale, I retell, their commitment. Maybe <laughs> passage of time 
will bring out the truth of the actual thing and the actual answer they give an Obasanjo. But for sure, if Atiku, if, if Obasanjo is not promoting Atiku, and he will never do that, if he's not promoting Etinibu, he will never do that. He is not going to promote uh, Konkoso. We all know this. Who is he going to promote? The answer is very clear. It's an Obi, and he has never, he has never hidden his quest for a power shift to the southeast. He has always said that they, have, they are being treated with ignominy. It's unfair. There are the people who have not yet tested the presidency. There are so many antecedents. There are so many instances. He doesn't have to come out. And what are the problems that the not has uh, with uh, uh, Peter Obi? Uh, is the not rejecting him or the not uh, welcomes Peter Obi with open hands, uh, with open arms to actually yeah, come we to want eat? Peter, we, wa we, wa we, we, want, we want Peter Obi to come over to the north himself, not through a surrogate or through uh, a, a conduit pipe or through a, a third party. Let him come directly to the north. Instead of going to this house and that house and those houses, there are millions of stakeholders. Let him give advance notice that I'm coming to the north. I'm coming to Kano. I'm coming to Kaduna. I'm coming to this place, to Sokoto, in, on zonal basis. Let everybody converge and ask me all the questions and I'll give all the answers. And if that happens to be, I assure you, I'll ask him four innocent questions. And uh, I want the answer in public. The first question is, uh, we've seen clips going around, not doctored ones, authentic clips, that OB is given an ample support to Biapara agitators. IPOB, the outlawed, the, the outlawed uh, criminal gang of IPOB, of IPOB, who have been killing and maiming and killing military, killing SSS, killing everybody killing Muslims and Christians in the name of agitation. He has been supporting them openly. He has been saying that they are not criminals. Do they you, are not a you, terrorist do organization. You have, do you Even have evidence have been, to this effect? They, because we haven't seen a Peter Obi coming I will send out, you the, I, uh, except if you have some evidence of I will private send you, conversations against him. I will, it, were you to go on break now, before you come back, I want you to have the courage. I will send you a clip now on Peter or Ob Peter Obi's support of IPOB. I will send it to you when you go on break and I hope you can play it to the public. Number two, uh, it is still in our fresh memory that when Peter Obi was presiding over at the Governor of Anambra State, we have it on Punch, on Tribune, on Daily Trust, on leadership, on the nation. The instruction he gave that all northerners who are staying in his own states must go and register, go through a census, hang an ID card before they can transact any business. That is extremely segregative. It only took the intervention of Concoso, visited him and said, Obi, if you insist on implementing this year's state law on northerners, I will go back to Kano where I have millions of traders who are of evil extraction and do the same. That was what checkmated Obi. Number three, you can't even count the number of northerners killed, maimed, incapacitated, dehumanized while Obi was presiding over. And mom was the word. You have seen it on the social media. His first child was wearing complete Biafran outfit. And he was marching the Nigerian flag. Well, we cannot, uh, we, we cannot independently if, if, verify that picture you, right can, now. Because it's been a, it is, a subject of controversy. I can also send it or not. I have the media handle verified of his son. He posted that picture. If your child can trample over the Nigerian flag, wear a Biafran uniform, and you want to preside over Nigeria, Come to the north and tell us that uh, what will happen to the north when you take over with that psych in your household? Are you going to excise the entire bribery out of Nigeria? Are you going to send the entire northerners to Nigeria Republic to Benin? What will be our own fate? We will ask him endless questions as uh, a uh, governor, uh, okay. as a Nigerian.
Uh, as somebody aspiring to preside uh, over you, Nigeria, you, you actually, there are endless questions to that. You actually said uh, you had four points uh, because we have to go on break right now. But uh, before you said the last point, I would want to let you know that Peter Obi actually visited the North as a vice, uh, um, as, as a uh, inten as an intending presidential. Uh, aspirant in the People's Democratic Party as a presidential aspirant I was on the entourage of Peter Obi that went around several states Kano, Maidugure way up onto Gombe way up onto Kebi, Sokoto and all of that so I want to place that on record that he visited but not as Labour Party presidential candidate but he visited as a presidential, no, as let presidential me, aspirant let, during the PDP let, 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 uh, let me give you let, let, me give you the, let me give you the analogy. If you go to a beer parlor and you want to be drunk, the first bottle will give you some level of uh, utility. The second bottle will add up to your utility. The third bottle will make you tipsy. Subsequent bottles will make you drunk. His visit under PDP is similar to somebody who went to the pub, took a bottle of wine or, or beer, and started becoming tipsy. After being tipsy, he left and he joined Labour Party. We want him to come over the north again, not drunk in, uh, in, in court, not tipsy, but in his real sense as a Labour presidential aspirant and talk to us. We are open to speaking to people. Uh -huh. We are open to listening to the people, but we want people to speak from one side of the mouth not from the other side of the mouth. All move. right. Uh, and I'll ask you, Madisha, to hold on while we go on this uh, short break. When we come back, the conversation continues uh, with you. Uh, you're still watching the Horizon TV. Pl plenty more still ahead, including the issues of uh, who the presidential candidate of the Labour Party is. And if indeed there's a fear among Northerners uh, that Peter will be, if he becomes president, uh, may not be favorable to that part of the country. We'll be examining all of this when we come back from the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Horizon TV where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the conversations. I'm Sumner Sambo and uh, my guest is still the uh, businessman, self-acclaimed anti-corruption crusader and chairman of Dialogue Group, Madishi, who is joining me from uh, Kaduna, the former capital of northern Nigeria, to take a look at issues uh, concerning uh, the 2023 elections and, of course, some of those who have uh, emerged as presidential candidates after the nominations closed uh, uh, last month. Uh, so good to still have you with us, uh, Madishehu. And uh, I've, I've actually watched uh, what you sent. Uh, I'm afraid uh, I would have loved to play it, but I can't play it because uh, this interview was on another TV channel. And of course, you should understand better why uh, I can't play that here. But I've listened, I've listened to Peter Obi uh, uh, making the comments there. And of course, I've seen the picture you sent, like I told you earlier on, that picture is still controversial. Uh, until we verify if indeed this Peter Obi son will just let it uh, stay like that. But if indeed we must make reference to this video you sent and what Peter Obi said there, that uh, uh, IPOB members... Uh, are not terrorists as at then when Nigeria was uh, 57 and he, uh, he, he was called upon to shed more light on it and that the federal government's uh, proclamation uh, calling them uh, terrorists uh, is not something that uh, he was sitting well with him. I would also want to pose a similar question to you. Uh, we've seen a lot of northern leaders actually say that Boko Haram members are not terrorists. Uh, we've seen uh, some people saying that bandits, before they were declared terrorists, are not terrorists, including uh, President Muhammadu Buhari at a point in time before he became uh, the head of state in, uh, uh, president in 2015. Isn't just politics that's at play here. Most times when people are not in government, they want to be sympathetic to some things that have some cultural affiliation. Don't you think that Peter Obi may have been saying that during that sort of feeling when there was a thinking within the Southeast that uh, uh, President Muhammad Buhari's government had a certain agenda against the East. Well, you see, interestingly, history always plays out. Go to the Southwest. 
after the sack coming back over in 1999, OPC alleged terror, mayhem, and carnage killed, maimed, incapacitated, burnt down, killed so many northerners across Shagamu, Mile 12, Ipe, Modokeke, everywhere it was carnage. And Obasanjo kept mom until when the international community rose up before OPC was outlawed. But even then, traditional rulers, clergy, elder statesmen of the southwestern origin, then and even now, are saying that what OPC did was legitimate. That is giving them an umbrella to continue killing and maiming. That is the history there. Perhaps OB is also learning from the Southwest because if the Yoruba elders, Council of Elders, agitators there, will give an umbrella for crime for the OPC, why don't he give umbrella also of crime for the IPO, for the ESN? I think he is learning very fast. But interestingly, if you look at that clip, you said you saw that clip. The reason why OB is saying that uh, IPOP are not uh, a terrorist organization, he gave a simplistic, unscholarly, and naive interpretation of terrorism. He said, these are people that I pass by when I am going on my walk. I pass by on the street. They don't beat. They don't do anything. Is that the definition of terrorism? A terrorist is somebody who is a non-state actor who took arms against the state, against the citizens, especially if he's selectively killing people, maiming them, incapacitating them, and sending them away. That is the first understandable definition of a terrorist who uses all available resources to him, all materials and equipment available to him to instill terror, to cause death, to cause harm, and to make economic dispossession simply because he is either naively or genuinely aggrieved. That was the reason of you gave. And I expected more than that from him, especially look at his exposure and his scholarship. But he never did that. In the north here, there are elements of people who said Boko Haram are not terrorists. But they are terrorists because they qualify into the definition of a terrorist just like the OPC, like the ESN, like the IPOP. Our problem is that uh, in Nigerian brand of democracy, unfortunately, we give umbrella, religious umbrella, ethnic umbrella, regional umbrella, to criminal gangs, to people who have looted and are looting the treasury, high, empty, and dry. The moment somebody steals money from the public treasury and is from a particular ethnic group, the moment he is taken to court, you will see like an example here in the north, somebody between himself, his wife, his houseboy, his house girl, they stole three billion naira from a bank in the north. They were taken to court. They appeared only once. Before the next adjournment date, a very prominent Islamic scholar in the north, two prominent, very senior uh, emirs, and a very senior activist went to the president and said, we are here to intervene on behalf of our son. And sadly, before the next adjournment date, the attorney general entered a nulla prosecute in favor of that accused person. Three billion naira was never recovered. He was pardoned. He was not even pardoned. They entered a nulla prosecute. And what pained me most was Two years after, that same person is still alive. His name appeared on the list of people who were given national honors. Even four weeks ago, I saw his name, Mr. So, 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 O, O, N, officer of the order of the Niger. Maybe they are giving him honor for stealing three billion naira. But surprisingly, 12 years after, a governor from the South South, stole 30 billion naira from the state government money. I think he was eyeing for GCON. Somebody stole 3 billion naira, he was given OON. And uh, it's not enough for him. So he stole 30 billion naira. He was also similarly taken to court. He also appeared only once. 
before the next date, I have the clip on NTA. South South Elders Forum, South South Christian Forum, and two prominent South 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 Southerners went to Obasanjo live on NTA, and they asked him, Mr. President, this money is said to have been stolen by our son. Does that money belong to the federal government or the state? Obasan just said, the money belongs to you. They said, he is our son. We have forgiven him. And he never appeared anymore. Not only that, during the Air Adwas regime, he became one of the most influential politicians in the history of Nigeria. And he is still alive and still influential in the pol politics of Nigeria. Yeah. This is the make of Nigeria for you. Yes, if, uh, this, uh, if this is, if, the, if, if this is the behavior of the clergy and the clerics and the traditional institution and those who have been reposed with the custody and trust of our money, God save democracy, God save Nigeria, God save the whole world. Yes, uh, and, and I must say you are trying to be balanced this time around on uh, some of the things you have observed because corruption wears, I mean, ethnic clothing, religious clothing in Nigeria, and it's, it's a battle, it's an ongoing battle uh, that we continue with as a nation. Um, you mentioned earlier that uh, the sons of, uh, uh, sorry, the sins of the father should not be visited on the sons. And I want to take you back to Nigeria. Neither that of the son being visited to the father. Yes, I, I want to take you back to Nigeria's political history, considering what happened in 1966 and the unfortunate coup, the killings, and all of that. Is Northern Nigeria yet to forgive the Igbo nation? Uh, if not, if the North has forgiven the Igbo nation for all that happened and transpired during that period, uh, why is it difficult for uh, a lot of northerners, including yourself, to want to queue behind the Peter Obi, who a lot of Nigerians say is competent, he's got the spirit of uniting Nigerians, and uh, he may help to develop the country? You see, forgiveness is divine. It is biblical, it is also Quranic. Even it is within common sense. But let me tell you one thing. The northern crop, the entire north, are the most forgiven people I have ever, ever seen on the face of the earth. Not because I'm a northerner, but I'll give you a reason. They are the most accommodating on the face of the earth, and they are the most tolerant for the following reasons. Number one, if we had not forgiven the Igbos for the killing of our officers during the 1966 coup, you wouldn't have had currently over three million Igbos in Kano pursuing legitimate businesses. All the shops they occupy in Kano are not on rent. It's owned by them. All the houses they occupy in Kano are not on rent. They are owned by them. They form part of the commercial nerve of Kano commerce. All the churches they have built in Kano, as at January this year, there are 4,980 churches fully certificated by Kano State Government, owned by Igbos, presiding over, and they are living in peace in Kano. Ask any Igbo man if he has any threat in Kano uh, to his uh, commerce, let, to let his life, co let me just to his come living. In, let me just me. come in here. Excuse it can't me. be owned it's, by it's, only excuse Igbos. Me. It's, it could be other uh, Nigerians, including Northerners. Excuse me. Uh, who, are, no, who are of uh, you Kano asking, origin, you who, are, are, who are Christians. You, 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 made, you, made, you made a specific of, uh, mention of if we have not forgiven Igbos. If you had said that, it is going to be an open ended, I can tell you, but I'm specifically answering your question. Go to Casina. Churches are owned by Igbos. Businesses in over 600,000 people who are over extraction in Casina are living peacefully. Go to Sokoto, go to Zampara, go to Kebbi. Come to Kaduna, millions of Igbos are all over the north. They are not even where, they are nowhere. They, are, they have the largest number of presence in the north in terms of their physicality, in terms of their business, in terms of their socialization, in terms of everything. If we are not accommodating, if we are not forgiving, if we don't look other side, if we don't turn the cheek, they wouldn't have been here. We have turned the other cheek. If you tell us how many chicks, we turn the right one, it was slapped. We turn the left one, it was snapped. We kept on turning the invisible chick of love 
so that Nigeria can remain peaceful. North is very accommodating. It is very tolerant. Okay. If that's the case, then why do you have a problem with uh, Professor Angu Abdullahi working with Olusha Obasanjo uh, to support a Peter Obi potential presidency uh, if he wins the election in 2023? Uh, and uh, don't you think that by taking this position, you're sending the wrong message that uh, uh, someone who is a Peter Obi from the Southeast should not be easily accepted by Northerners? You are not even understanding me. I said, let over to be, this is, a, politics is an open market. It is a game of negotiation. Of course, it's a game of numbers. Let Peter Obi come over to the north and sell his candidature. We will weigh him, we evaluate him, we assess him based on his own presentation, not through a third party. And I don't have an issue for the records of Angu Abdullahi. He's an elder statesman, much older than me. I respect him. He has given in, in, incalculable contribution to the development of education on the north. But the objection I have is that uh, he is an active member of Northern Elders Forum, presumably speaking for the north, for the downtrodden northerners, for the poor northerners, for the traumatized northerners, for the dispossessed northerners, that is his selling point, speaking for the North. And all of a sudden, fully aware of history records, of the antecedents of an OB as a governor, how can he convince Northerner that he's not speaking from both sides of the mouth? In one breath, you are said to be protecting the North, projecting the North, promoting the North and Northerners and Northern interests. In another breath, Somebody is trying to drag you into an OB project because I'm saying drag him because I don't know whether he has bought the project hook, line, and sinker. But if he does, it is the biggest disservice he is doing to Northern Elders Forum. It is the biggest disservice he is doing to the memory of Sardona of Sokoto, Sir Ahmed Bello, Prime Minister Tapawa Balewa, Joseph Tarka, name them. It's the biggest uh, mistake he can make in his life to be speaking from two sides of the mouth. He's entitled to go and promote an OB, but the moment he does that, he should keep aside the issue of protecting, promoting, and protecting the North. You okay. can't have the two going simultaneously at the same time. Okay, uh, at least you have uh, uh, said clearly here that he has this constitutional right to back anyone that he chooses to. So why are you involved in the likes does. Uh, why are you involved in the likes of uh, former head of state uh, Ibrahim Babangida and uh, former national security advisor uh, General Ali Uguso in this issue? Why are you asking them to stay away from supporting Peter Obi and why were you also bringing Atiku Abubakar into that conversation? Okay, for a special reason I will pick one after the other. Number one, if an Obasanjo has disdain for Atiku, it's not for a reason, it's not for no, for, for no reason. There is a reason for that. One of the reasons might be that Atiku took Obasanjo to court as a sister vice president nine times, up to the Supreme Court, and he won nine times. Obasanjo is not a forgiven soul. He will never forget Atiku for making him look maybe naive in the eyes of the law. Winning somebody nine times in the eyes of the law means Atiku has an upper hand legally on Obasanjo's empty claims and threats and intimidation. Number two, there is a way you reciprocate. There are people that reciprocate you negatively with the bad blood. I think it's part of Obasanjo's way of paying back to an Atiku. The same Atiku, when Obasanjo came out from the prison, he was technically bankrupt. He was brought out by a northern coalition and other southern coalition. He was dusted, clean, given a clean bath, and he was called uh, 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 an elder Obasanjo, a trustworthy Obasanjo, drafted into the political arena, made a president out of him, saw him in. They garnered a lot of money when he was presiding, when he was pro, uh, when he was campaigning. He realized that. Only an Atiku has a structure of PDM inherited from Shah Musar Adwa. And he needed a structure that is fully rooted in the north. He did not pick Atiku wholeheartedly 
in all sincerity, but because I had, I think I had three, three advantages. Number one, he had a solid PDM structure. Number two, he knows the game of politics. Number three, he has so many supports from all over the country, enough to make an Obasanji a president. You could see that soon after becoming the president, only the first two years were rosy. The remaining seven, the, the remaining six years were hectic and Herculean and embattes for an atiku. At every point in time, like the scribes and the Pharisees of Jesus Christ's time, always asking for a question. Where is Atiku? What is Atiku doing? What happens to Atiku? He wanted to nail him. That is why they were in court nine times. Maybe that is why they are reciprocating Atiku. And that was the condition under which I brought in an Atiku. Number two, for an IBB, when Obasanjo left Zaria, when he was reporting back to his group, he said his next two assignments will be to reach out to IBB and to reach out to General Alugoso. If you had my clip very well, I was just giving IBB and Alugoso an advance notice that in the event an Obasanjo come asking for their support for an OB project, they should be extremely careful and worried. And I reminded IBB that if there is anybody in the world who knows, Ati, who knows uh, Obasanjo very well, he is one of the 10 people who knows Obasanjo very well in and out for the following reasons. The same Babangida who rehabilitated or was part of the rehabilitation team of, of, of Obasanjo made him a president. Soon after ascending to power, he made Babangida his punching bag. I still remember freshly when he came to Ariwa House, the first Ariwa House lecture, Obasanjo was the speaker. And he painted Babangida in the most uncomplimentary colors. He called him stupid, bastard, a failure, so many unprintable adjectives. The same Babangida had spent over three billion naira to ensure that Obasanjo becomes the next Secretary General after Butrus Butrus Gali. But in spite of all this magnanimity, Obasanjo gave Babangida's regime endless trouble, more than the scribes, the biblical scribes and the Pharisees. So I told Babangida, remember, be a prisoner of history. Remember what Obasanjo did to you. Ensure that if Obasanjo comes in for an OB project, at the least you can do is remain neutral. Uh, uh, okay. Remain uh, indifferent. Uh, 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 we don't have He enough. has injured you in the past. He will continue to injure you. <laughs> we don't have and enough time told left, uh, Madisho. That, uh, uh, Obasan, uh, Obasan may come over to you. Be careful. Be wary. Uh, uh, okay. Madisha, we don't have enough time left. Um, I should try to round off this conversation uh, very quickly. So you are saying that if Peter Obi comes to the North on his own without an Obasan the North will give him more listening ear. And some people will want to question your credibility or your credentials for wanting to speak for the North. Who appointed you the right speaker for the North? since you don't belong to Arewa Consultative Forum let, or the let, Northern let, Elders let, Forum, on what let, platform let, do you have let, this credentials to let, speak let, on behalf let, of the North? Let, 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 luckily, in your introduction, you never introduced me as somebody speaking for the North. Neither have I done that. That is number one. Number two, under the Nigerian Constitution, the, the, the second part, the second chapter, dealing with fundamental objective and directed principle of state policy, clearly spelled out why government come into place to protect lives, properties, honor, dignity of the citizens. And why they have failed to do that, I have a civic, moral, constitutional, ethical responsibilities to speak out without claiming to speak on anybody's behalf, exercising my own rights as a citizen, unless we are going to dispossess me of that right. Number three, it is politics. I am a stakeholder, a registered voter. I have my own choices and I have my own preferences. Uh, okay. Part of my preferences and choice is to, is to speak out loudly. If uh, you speak uh, the right. truth, you die. <laughs> If you don't speak the truth, you die. Uh, okay. I'd rather speak the truth and uh, die. Okay, so just before we go, I didn't hear you saying anything about Bola Tinobu and the APC. Is it uh, an admittance that uh, the North may likely be in bed with uh, the APC and its candidates? And so that's why you are going so hard uh, against uh, Tinobu and you're talking more well, uh, of Atiku and well, uh, Peter Obi. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't have any problem with uh, Bola I don't have any problem with Bola Tibu. 
The only problem Nigerians have with him is let him come out from, to, through a credible media like Arise and tell people his real name, the schools he went to, his genealogy, his background, the source of his wealth, his state of health, and so on and so forth in an open, transparent manner, not being evasive, not hiding behind the scene, and not making empty statements. Gone are the days when you sell people a trumpet card, when you sell people uh, a, a rotten meat, when you have option to give them a fresh meat. So, so uh, will you now be saying that uh, your, your allegiance is to someone like uh, Rabbi Musa Kwankwanso of the NMPP, is, is that where the North seem to be going at the moment? I guarantee you that the day I make my mind to promote and protect and project a presidential candidate in Nigeria, that day there will be no missing of the words. I will be straight, <laughs> open, direct to the point and unapologetic. Okay. Take me on this. All right. Uh, we must thank you so much, uh, Madishevu, who is a civil rights campaigner and then, uh, of course, a, a voice in the north and then uh, anti-corruption crusader, <laughs> medical practitioner, so many things, including being an activist. On the, on the authority on the author on the, on the authority of some of Arise, I have not said that. <laughs> All right, we must thank you for joining us from the northern cap, uh, city of uh, Kaduna thank you, to help us look at these uh, issues. And we can only hope to have you more as uh, politics develop because the campaigns are yet to begin. And when the campaign starts, I'm very sure you will be very busy that period because of some of the things you have said here. Well, that's how it's been for this edition of the Arise interview. Do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching. I'm Somna Sambu.